Working remote isn't all rainbows and butterflies. Or is it? We came to Peru to join our favorite travel YouTubers, Craig and Amy, from Kinginet in Cusco at the end of May. Beforehand, we wanted to test out a digital nomad lifestyle, so we searched for the perfect Peruvian destination and found it here in Huaraz, nestled at the base of the Andes. Join us as we hike through these mountains. Look how huge this elevator is! Try the local cuisine. Play with street dogs and observe their beautiful culture. In this episode of Kendra's Dusty Road. Well, hello there. Hi. We made it to Baraz. I didn't get much sleep. <laughs> However, as night buses go, Mobile bus, I thought was pretty Great. Um, the seats that we got laid down 180 degrees so you can lay flat. I will say the only thing though, if you're taller than like 5'8", you might be kind of like this. Because <laughs> like there's a wall in front of you. So I actually ended up like to be more comfortable, like there's this little platform that you can either have like flat or you can have it like this so that you've got like a footrest. That ended up being more comfortable than me. Just in case you ever find yourself in Peru taking Mobile bus. It was not Mobile's fault that I did not sleep. But yeah, I mean, it's a curvy, bumpy road. Like, <laughs> there's not much the company can do about that. As uh, far as ways to travel, it was delightful. Waraz, cool freaking city just up in the middle of the Andes. We're sitting at about 10,000 feet. The Airbnb we got. Host name names are David and Marie. Marie's from Belgium. Belgium has freedom. And David, it's probably Daddy because he is from here in Peru. Super friendly people. They're really excellent homes. And yeah. they also rent out like trekking equipment, so you don't have to bring it all down. And you want trekking equipment because the mountains in this town are amazing. But anyway, we'll probably give you a tour of the Airbnb a little later. Right now, we just wanted to go up and taste <laughs> a low elevation hike. And by low elevation... Acclimatizing hike. <laughs> yeah, by low eleva elevation, I mean just like in the foothills around here. Because like these peaks are huge. Like we're at 10,000 feet already. And I think Huascaran, like it is the highest mountain in, in Peru. And I think it's about 20,000 feet. I'm not sure. We'll put a text somewhere here and if there's a discrepancy between that and what I say, go with that. So we actually got here yesterday morning. We didn't really do any filming. Figured we just kind of take it easy, acclimatize a little bit, and then today go on like an easy hike. And we figured this place would be perfect for like a working vacation because I can just kind of hang out here, take it easy. And your work views have never been so great. Yeah, the terrace up there. Like I get Wi-Fi up there and I can just work on the terrace and look at the mountains. It's, it's amazing. We're gonna head out on our hike. Yeah. So we just stopped here at our turning point to go up to our hike to uh, shed our jackets and drink some water, put some more sunscreen on. You're probably going to get sick of hearing me talk about this mountain, <laughs> but seriously, look at this thing. The camera doesn't do it justice. That mountain is majestic as hell. Plus it's what, like two hours away from us? Yeah. And it's still that huge? You would think it would be much closer than yeah. this. And it's like a couple hours north of here. But anyway, finish sunscreening it up and do some more hiking. What you stop for, babe? Look how huge this all is. <laughs> So this is a trail, it seems more like a road slash trail. 
but it's on all trails, and it's called the Puka Ventana. Puka Ventana Running Trail. We figured we would walk it, since we're still getting used to the elevation. And let's be honest, we probably won't run it either way. Um, we chose it because it's supposed to be about an hour and a half hike, and he's got to get back to work. Oh, buddy. Come on. Come on. Let's go. The jogger just passed us. He's jogging with his dog. Come on. Let's go, Wolf. You can be ours for a minute. So. We decided to run for a bit so we can get that guy's dog to catch up with him. You doing okay, bud? All right. So we met up with the runner and learned his dog's name is Honko. Honko. And he, the runner's name? Jorge. He's blind in one eye, so he said he can't run too far ahead of him or he gets lost. I thought that maybe the dog was tired and so he liked our pace a little bit more. <laughs> but no, it turns out he's blind so he probably just kind of sensed us around him and thought maybe we were thought him. Maybe thought we were <laughs> I, I doubt he thought we were him because, you know, there's scents and everything, but... But he knew he was in good company. Yeah. Honko, <laughs> friendly little dog. So. Anyway, onward and upward. This drink is a bunch of berries in all of their splendor, is the way the menu described it, with cocoa leaf liqueur. So we got some blueberries on a toothpick, and then we got some cocoa leaves, fruits down in the bottom, so pretty excited about giving this a try. It tastes like a fruity mixed drink. I ordered the Lomo Saltado Clásico, which is El Infantable de la Cocina Peruana. And what does that mean? No idea. <laughs> Actually, I think it's like the famous dish in Peru. So our food has arrived. Kendra's is the Lomo Saltado. And she is not the half of her bread. How would you describe that to somebody that has never tasted anything in their life? Start eating. <laughs> Tastes like meat. <laughs> Nothing. And vegetables and potatoes. So I'm just putting on a whole combination of the meat. Also, another thing that's very interesting about this restaurant, this table is an old sewing machine table, which is kind of interesting. Cool. So these are the hot wings that are marinated in beer and ahi. We're just going to go right at it.
The wings are great. The seasoning's good. I just have no clue how to describe what it tastes like. Yeah, I got nothing. It's different. You just have to come down here and try it. The only thing I can think of is it's like it's got a very green flavor, but I don't know if that's just because I'm seeing green. They're pretty good. How much you want to bet I can throw a football over them mountains? If coach would have put me in the fourth quarter, we'd have been state champions, no doubt. No doubt in my mind. So, if you want to come to Huaraz, it's just an eight hour bus ride north of Lima. You can take the day bus or you can take the night bus. We chose to take the night bus. It was flat, we laid flat the whole time. And that's all I have to say about it. Did you want to be your friend? I don't know. I love his face. It's all shaggy and stuff. Oh, another one. Oh, you want the food? Oh, that's what they want. <laughs> They'll be friends if you've got food. And here they are, back in. Cash Wendy's. Which uh, key is it? Good morning. It is day three here in Huaraz. We decided we're gonna do just a little bit of a body weight workout up on the terrace. Morning. Morning, beautiful. Did a little work on my Amazon business. Went and made coffee for Kendra and then came up here. Woke her ass up, got her out of bed. No, I'm sleepy. <laughs> Wake up, we gotta go do a workout. So yeah, we're gonna I go do that. games. Baby. Gotta get svelte and... Svelte. What was the other word? Swole. Svelte and swole, that's what we're going for. So. Or just, you know, or just off the traveler's pounds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think this trip will be better than most as far as like gaining weight. It will be better than Vegas. I think the food's a little bit healthier down here than Vegas and San Diego and Florida, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. All right, I'll tell you what. I may be new to this whole digital nomad lifestyle. It's been, what, three days or so? So I realized that there's some novelty to it that might wear off eventually. But so far I'm of the opinion that anybody that says that it's overrated is full of bull honky. We get to work here with this view. It's freaking amazing. So anyway, just made Kendra some coffee and she is going to enjoy it. And I'm going to do a little work on the laptop. Then we're gonna do a workout. This is our Airbnb called Quechua Andes. Quechua Andes. It's at the top of this hill with great views of Mount Huascaram. But anyway, this is Quechua Andes and it is owned by David and Marie. As you can see, they also have a travel agency. They set up trekking, mountaineering, and day trips to a lot of the different lakes and mountain peaks here within Huascanon National Park. All of the hikes you've seen us go on, they have recommended and set up the transport for us. Um, it's been really nice. Um, but opens up into this beautiful courtyard area. Some really pretty plants. They've got a climbing wall back there in the corner. Um, little seating area. This is their office. There's this door right here that leads to the laundry area. They have a laundry service where they will wash your laundry in the machine and then dry it for you. Otherwise, you can do it by hand in the sink, which Kendra did the first time, but then we opted to pay them the second time. So anyway, back to the courtyard. We've got a kitchen that is completely at the guest's disposal. Coffee maker, sink to wash dishes, nice oven and range. All the plates, pots, pans, coffee cups, teacups, Wine glasses, silverware, cookware. We've got a little fridge over here. And then a spot to store. Way more storage than we need, but we've pretty much just used like this little portion right here. So yeah, lovely kitchen. The 
They've also got lovely photography posted all over the place. And Marie did take all these pictures, and then she and Dubby did all the editing and make a lot of uh, guidebooks with lots of good pictures in them to show you all the different places you can go here in the Andes. There's a guest room right there. There's another guest room right there. There's also one downstairs. It's the entrance to our room. Okay. And there's Kendra being all chipper and stuff. More beautiful photography. A nice cozy bed with a down comforter. Quite delightful to sleep in. Got some nightstands, plugs that you can charge with. Make sure you bring an adapter if you're from the United States. A couple storage areas, some shelves over here where you can set some stuff. We got a nice closet that provides you with some hangers so you can hang your clothes. Got a nice window. For some reason that gets pretty humid in here. I guess we breathe heavy. I don't know. It's true. This is the highest tropical city in the world. Window looks down into the courtyard, which I already showed you. We've also got this balcony that goes out to this, well, the door that goes out to this balcony, which has a nice seating area. Come out here a couple times, done some work on the laptop, at least while I was working. I haven't been out here really since. Have a cup of tea. Yeah. Read a book. Whatever. Yeah, it's a really relaxing place. So our Airbnb has this little station right outside our room where they've got hot water cups up for us. There's a bunch of tea bags in this container. But this container has something that helps out with altitude sickness. And these are coca leaves, actually the plant that is used to make cocaine. But don't worry, we're not doing drugs. This is pre-processed. This is all natural. So he said to put eight leaves in each cup. Four, five, eight. That's a big one. Might be strong. Oh well. Go big or go home. Okay, Kendra's going for it. The tea smells a lot like a uh, lawnmower bag after a fresh cut, so we're expecting it to taste like grass. So I'm gonna add some sugar. Let's get a seeping for a few minutes. The water's green. So it's in here. Dude, it's gonna be so good for you because it's so green. Oh, this cocoa leaf tea. And yes, cocoa as a cocaine leaf. It's not processed like cocaine. Okay. So it's help. It's supposed to help with altitude sickness. I haven't really felt a ton of altitude sickness. But it's a. Uh... Cheers. New experience. It's like sweet grass. It's been steeping for, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes or so. I'm it's still pretty a, hot. Give it a little stir -zinho. That's a little stir for those who don't speak Oh shoot, I just Portuguese. got that one wet too. So the sugar should be wet, but well. I usually like to have a dry spoon for the sugar, but I don't need it. You described it accurately. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think it's bad. I mean, when you see people drinking their spinach shakes, which I've had spinach shakes and they don't taste bad, but like they look all green. I've always imagined before I tried them that that's what that would taste like. It tastes a lot like green tea to me. Yeah? Yeah, which makes sense because it, I mean, it's tea and it's, it's green. green. tea. Put a tablespoon of sugar in. It's a teaspoon. A teaspoon of sugar in. A teaspoon yeah. of sugar helps the medicine go down. That's true. Yeah, tastes about the same. A little sweeter, but... Yeah, it's not bad. They did say that it is a bit of a stimulant. They compared it to coffee, so we'll see if it affects me. Coffee doesn't really keep me up. I actually think coffee is relaxing to drink and I usually get sleepy because it's like hot, warm comfort. But yeah, we'll see if this uh, makes me jumping off the walls here in a few minutes. Who knows? Well, Cheers! So, Juarez is having a celebration for their patron saint, Señor de Soledad. So there are a whole bunch of celebrations going on. Marching bands and Dancers. people with like cool masks and like get up on. Just 
marching around the streets. But anyway, right now we're gonna go down to a church where they have like the main celebration. Our Airbnb host, David, is gonna go with us. I imagine there's gonna be some like interesting cultural dancing and chant. Like, I don't know, I'm excited. So figure we'll go and see what we can see. As you can probably tell, we grew quite fond of our hosts, David and Marie. They were truly family by the end of our stay with them. We didn't record while we were with them, out of respect for their privacy. This is the only picture we got of us together when we went out for pizza on our last night in Juarez. As we were editing this video, we received the devastating news that Marie passed away. Though our friendship was short, we feel like we'd know Marie our whole lives. Our hearts go out to David. We're so sorry for the passing of Marie and send all our love and condolences.